So here's a quick little discussion topic, uh, sequels of games we like to see. The funny thing is, like, when you talked about that, one of the first games that popped in my head was um, Beyond Good and Evil. Oh, yeah. Which has been rumored around that a sequel is coming out. It's just been kind of that floating in the purgatory of game releasing area where a lot of other games hang out. They made a little teaser trailer sort of thing, but it's a game that really does deserve it because the world is so expansive and it was way ahead of its time. Um, it was a platformer with a very interesting team based element. It was dark yet had a kind of cartoony feel. It was just it was a really interesting game and I was really surprised by its quality. So that one's definitely up there on the list for me. And the main character was a badass chick that fought with Kung Fu and the staff. Yeah. And it was cool to see a leading woman of color. Yeah. Green. Ha <laughs> ha! Adopt, adopted by a pig. <laughs> the only problem with Beyond Good and Evil, it kind of falls into that. We could release a sequel, but the first one didn't sell. So even though you want it, there's the cost-effectiveness problem. Oh yeah, easily. Well, especially since games have become a lot more expensive to produce. A lot of people are thinking, well, it, is it worth making for the niche crowd that knows of it? Because everyone's, you know, it, unless it has something that's interesting about it, it's probably not going to sell well. This is all about making profits, despite the artistic uh, merits of it. That's why a lot of artistic uh, gamers turn to indie games, cheaper ones. Because it allows them to let their opinions out with much smaller developers, and they don't have to worry so much about the bottom line of it. But spend $300 million on a game, you better damn hope it sells. <laughs> Makes me wonder if a Beyond Good and Evil 2 Kickstarter would go well. Oh, I'm sure it would. I mean, it definitely falls into that category of you have had to have played it to want it. Mm. But it's one of those games that has enough kind of instinctual merit based on the length of how many times, you know, people have said positive things about it even now. So, yeah, I'd like to love to see a sequel to Beyond Good and Evil. Despite them saying there's going to be one, I'll still count that one on the list. Sure, because it's still up in the air if it'll even happen. Yeah. And of course, you know, on a subject of games I'm going to play, Skies of Arcadia is definitely on that list, too. That's a game that desperately needed, even if it's maybe necessarily a, a sequel, but at least a remake. Right. Because despite how good the game is, it does feel its age based on graphics and lack of voiceover and things like that. But if it if it got the old HD touch and it got cleaned up and they added new music and maybe some cleaner voiceover and things like that, oh, God, it'd be so great. Preferably voiceover by people who know what they're doing. Well, I mean, in this game, you could tell that they had so much content shoved in there that it's like voice over didn't exactly become a priority. Mm -hmm. I mean, the game originally came on the Dreamcast, for God's sakes. Yeah. That was over 14 years ago. See, when I suggested this discussion topic to Travis, the first one that came into my head and his reaction was, what is a Nino Kuni 2? <laughs> Are you just saying that because you're going to play with one of our random ideas to go into it? Well, yes and no. I think a Nino Kuni 2 would be a good idea if they started with kind of the subject that we've been thinking this game is actually based around Oliver, a kid, working through the emotional issues of losing his mother and coming to terms with that. And so the game as a whole has a very innocent touch to it. Everything is just sort of black and white. And I think a Nino Kuni 2 that took a much more adult, uh, maybe a point of view from a teenager, say, someone who's starting to develop his own autonomy, starting to develop his own sense of morality. The story could become more complex, it could become less sort of stupidly predictable, just kind of embarrassingly simple in how it goes. It could become much more interesting than that. Uh, and it, it could be interesting to see it if it were to directly sort of deconstruct the simpleness of the first game. Plus that would play into my theory about the, ga the game itself, about the whole in Oliver's head thing. The game becomes more dark and complicated, just like a teenager. Without falling into Shadow the Hedgehog syndrome, obviously. Oh yeah, we don't need guns. But just a more mature outlook on the game, which I think would make for better writing, possibly. Like, number one, if the writing was better, I would happily play an Eno Kuni too. And I actually gave a shit about the characters. People have this weird habit of that if we're, if we're going to play upon this being made for kids, it's, playing for kids doesn't necessarily mean it's padded. That's not the same thing. What you're not putting into it never equates to what you actually do put into it. And by making it censored and soft and easy, you're not doing any favors for a child there. You add content that will expand them, you know, their way of thinking and things they can enjoy. And it's something that Lamino Kuni misses. It's since it seems so out of place with what's going on. I mean, it starts in, in kind of an adult theme of death and then it just goes into wacky land. 
It almost makes it kind of annoying in that way. If I knew it was a kid game to begin with, I would be less upset. But it didn't come off that way at first. Yeah. At the very start, it seems like it'll treat the player more like an adult than it actually does. That's why I still have my continued theory that this is all in his head. Because the world itself treats the world like a kid. <laughs> yeah. Everything's black and white, there's good and evil, and crap like that. And that gets tiring. Oh, yeah. Of course, Sleeping Dogs 2 would be fantastic. And that is actually happening, thankfully. Oh, uh, is that official? Yep, it's been announced. Yes. It's called Sleeping Dogs Triad Wars. I don't think there's any details on if Wei Shen is returning as a protagonist. Can I say games that have already had sequels, but they had not had sequels in a long time? Of course. Panzer Dragoon. I vaguely remember that one. Has a number of sequels. Um, the last game they came out was, was for the original Xbox called Panzer Dragoon Orta. Um, and there have been games of kind of a similar nature, but imagine a, a more adult-themed Star Fox. Uh-huh. And that's what you'd kind of get with Panzer Dragoon. But I'd love to see another re-release of that. I loved Orta. But yeah, that one's been waiting for a sequel for a long time. I've been thinking of picking up a copy of that when I got my Saturn. I just didn't. <laughs> and it probably would have been valued for like 100 bucks now. <laughs> At least 50. Yeah. <laughs> Those Japanese games, I tell you. I actually championed the idea of having a Zelda sequel that took place in Termina. But the more I think about it, I actually think that would be a bad idea. Just because the sort of the subtext and the symbolism of Termina fits so much better with uh, the hero of time, the struggles of his life, the people he's met that I think another sequel that would take place in the same location with the same people would devalue that somewhat. I would still love to see a remake, but I think Termina itself should stick to Majora's Mask. Uh, I wouldn't mind, though, seeing another Zelda sequel that doesn't take place in Hyrule. Not just Majora's Mask, but also the Oracle series took place in Holodrum. And, um... I think they kind of shoot themselves in the foot by making it the Legend of Zelda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of gets you stuck in a pit hole. It's like, it's got to involve Zelda somehow, I guess. Even in Twilight Princess, when they crowbarred her in. <laughs> they did that with the Oracle series, too. <laughs> the two main games, she's not in them at all. But if you beat one game and link to the other, she gets crowbarred in in this sudden mission by uh, Twin Rova to revive Ganon. Okay. Otherwise, they're separate. One I'm surprised they haven't made yet is a Eternal Darkness 2. I'm really surprised by that, because how well that game did. I don't know what happened to the developer, but... It was like one of the most popular games for the GameCube and probably one of the highest rated. And there's only one and it's, you know, never heard of an idea of making a new one, despite the fact that with new console graphics, how much more intense that game would be. Yeah. A lot of games I play get constant sequels. <laughs> well, nowadays it's hard to pick anything recent because recent games kind of go through those incarnations pretty easily. It's the big budget syndrome. Um, everything costs more to make, so why would you make a game that makes people happy when you can make games that make money? <laughs> That's why lately I've been more addicted to, you know, low indie budget games. They tend to focus more on the gameplay and what people want. Well, here's one. Uh, there was a DS series called Lost in Blue. I remember that game. Uh, th th I guess is as good a place as any to point out. I am going to be doing a short Let's Play of their uh, spiritual predecessor, Survival Kids, on the Game Boy Color. It's going to be a pretty short game. It's a survival series. Uh, you're a castaway on an island. You and one other person have to survive, find a way off the island. There were two sequels on the DS. The second one I hear is generally one of the better ones. If anything, because in the first one, your female partner is blind and is stuck in the kitchen. Literally. <laughs> which is kind of uncomfortable. In the yeah. second game, she can actually help out. Third game I hear was just generally kind of shit, but there was more characters. They also made a Wii game, which I hear was just overall horrible. But um, I think a new Lost in Blue game that didn't do all of the things that weren't good about the series could make for a really good game, because I, I just generally like games like that, where you explore, you have to take care of yourself, you have to use all the resources you can find to make tools to get more items to help build up your strength so you can explore this interesting island, which generally has a lot of ruins, ancient civilizations, some puzzles. It could make for a fun game. It's just it's, there's a lot of tedium involved in keeping yourself and your partner alive. Oh, yeah. And no one likes escort missions. No. A game that I think would be fun but silly would be a form of elite beat agents for the Wii U. <laughs> that game was so goddamn fun. And I can imagine, like, a combination of using that big-ass screen controller with it to actually create the panels that the other player moves to. Because, I mean, if you don't know the premise, it's like a team of agents 
that dances to solve problems. I vaguely remember that. They dance to solve, you know, the baby's crying, they dance. A comet's about <laughs> to hit the earth, they dance. Okay, it was a really big deal in Japan, and I think they had a couple sequels, but American side, they made one for the original uh, DS. I think it would be a great little game to have something where you can get people up to move their Wii controllers to do dance moves to save the earth somehow. <laughs> or fight dinosaurs, I don't know. You know another sequel I like to see? Half-Life 3, goddammit. <laughs> I guess that fits in the role of they haven't made a sequel in a long time. I mean, it is kind of fucked up that they leave on a cliffhanger. <laughs> Actually, did they ever do Half-Life 2 Episode 3? No, they didn't. And wasn't there supposed to be? Yeah. God damn it, Valve. You have episode two, where, I, you know what, I don't care. My rules on spoilers, if it's been around long enough, you hear the spoiler, deal with it. The old black dude dies, right in front of, her, right in front of his daughter, and you're pinned underneath, I think, some rubble, and then it screen fades to black and it ends. And you're like, what? <laughs> Something happened, right? Years later, we don't know. Oh, God. I'd like to see a sequel to the Scott Pilgrim game they made. That game was actually kick-ass. I heard good things about it. I've always kind of had a weakness for old school, uh, old school style gaming, um, but it was a lot of fun and the music was fantastic. I never thought I would get to a point where I wondered what the hell happened to Guitar Hero. I mean, the funny thing is I found a, an old box for Guitar Hero in my closet once. I went, I remember that game being fun. And it was, but we, it just got so oversaturated. Well, because then I think they died after they're like, we made one entirely devoted to Aerosmith. And everyone's like, boo, we don't even like Aerosmith that much. <laughs> I mean, they're a famous rock band, at least. I never liked them. I like a couple of their songs, and that's about it. That's a lot of their older stuff. Well, it didn't help that, like, half of the set list in every game was just kind of modern shit that nobody actually likes. That doesn't even really use a guitar that much. I thought that was the even worse problem with Rockstar. Because half the time, it's like, these are boring guitar things to play. I mean, this sucks. Now we're just talking about games that we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what doesn't need a sequel? Rockstar. <laughs> because spending that much money on a game is bullshit. I think a sequel to Metal Gear Rising would be good. Oh, uh, I think they are going to make one. Hopefully. It was so much fun. It'd be cool if they utilized Blade Wolf in the uh, main story a bit. Well, I know they at least made a DLC where you get to play them. Yeah, but not one in the main story. It did feel like a wasted element. I would like to see more stories based on games that are already kind of sequeled out. Like, I would like to know more about Twilight Zone and Twilight Princess. You mean Twilight Realm? Yeah, that's what I mean. The Twilight Zone. <laughs> There's Hitler on the side of my plane. Uh. <laughs> Why do we have planes in Hyrule? Uh, we're going down. That's the sound the plane makes as it goes down. Uh. <laughs> Corey's goes down because he fired it out of a cannon. Clown cannon. <laughs> you know what I'd also like to see a game have a, a modern release for as a sequel? Advance Wars. I remember that one. If people know me well enough, they know how much I love Fire Emblem. And um, that particular game was uh, basically a military version of that game. And they made one other sequel, I think. But they were both for the uh, uh, Game Boy Advance. And that game could really use with kind of an update and would be co kind of cool in 3D, or at least good on the 3DS. Oh my god, I just thought of a game I'd love to have a sequel for. River City Ransom. I think I remember that. It's, it's, I don't know if I played it, but I It's a stupid concept. It's a, such an old game. You play like a Japanese high school, middle school or high school gang member. So they're, they're the, that stereotype. And your girlfriend gets kidnapped by the rival school. So you got to fight off other kind of gangs while also building up your own gang to go save your girlfriend. And every gang was like a, a different stereotype. So like there was the Brooklyn gang and they all talk like mafiosos. And then there was like the rapping gang. And it was like it was just so silly. And you could learn different moves by eating different kinds of food and reading different kinds of books. And then you'd have you'd run to this one dude where it's just like, I know telepathy. And he just throws like tires at you. <laughs> it's so stupid, but it was so fun. And it had such a good replay value because you would level up your characters in a different way and learn different moves and get a different crew and take things in different ways. Uh, oh, man, it was so fun. I mean, there have been beat-up games like that, but I'd love to hear that. The, the music they have throughout the entire game is just so catchy. I had it for a ringtone for a while. Plus, it made the... It was infamous because if you knocked out characters, a lot of times they would say barf and die. <laughs> I do remember that, actually. That came from that game, so... I'd like to see a new Jack game. Because they did make a few sequels, but they weren't that good. I feel like Naughty Dog is so focused on their adult content that they'll never allow themselves to get to that point again. I think PlayStation's like, look, you're really good at this uh, making adult content stuff. Keep doing it. Without spoiling it, considering where Bioshock Infinite goes, 
I still think it would be interesting to see if they did another Bioshock game, what direction that would go. Yeah, I, it's if you've seen it, you know what we're talking about, but playing this latest game kind of felt like it was like, oh, way to kill making sequels, asshole. How do you think a Dragon's Dogma sequel would go? I, you know what? That'd be easy enough to make because it follows that standard art. You know, it is pretty much a standard RPG. And there's elements they could definitely improve upon. I think an actual multiplayer mode would be good. Oh, yeah, definitely. And also, I wish you could have a little bit more control of what your how your familiars reacted. It was kind of annoying that every time one of your familiars... I, I call them familiars because they basically are familiars. Um, mm -hmm. When you walk by areas, they respond the same way to everything. So you walk by the same area where they're just like, I see a castle in the distance. Away capsule, perhaps? And then you leave and then walk back later. Oh, there's a castle in the distance. Away castle, perhaps? I'm like, just figure it out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I think I found the River City Ransom song on my phone. <laughs> that is not it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you are. Regarding sequels that are actually coming out, I'm looking pretty forward to Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain. Oh, yeah, especially after this latest uh, trailer. They always have those that don't tell much about it, but you're just like, I'm intrigued. And they did do a gameplay trailer. It basically looks like what we saw in Ground Zeroes. And even though I sucked at Ground Zeroes, it was still kind of engrossing. And I, I like that they're returning a lot of the elements from Peace Walker that I liked. Namely, kidnapping people and making them work for you. And apparently we can do that with goats, too. <laughs> My problem I see in that game is just, it looks a lot harder with it being kind of an open world feel. And it felt like at least with kind of stealth around when you had kind of a set small map it was easier to figure out where to move like okay there's five enemies and they're walking these different directions i can kind of get a path this one it's just like i don't even know where the hell they're gonna be coming from which overall could be interesting but that's the main reason why i sucked at ground zeros i had one of my friends do the classic complaint of a lot of people it's not david hater i'm like keith or sutherland's awesome as snake listen to him he was all right i think he's perfect for that role i take him much more serious mainly just because i think the I, this is an unpopular opinion, but I do... After a while, I've been thinking David Hayter's voice in that character sounds really stupid. Yeah. I guess if you want to make the game campy, perfect. But obviously, the last thing um, Kojima wants to make is that game campy. He looks like he's trying to go for, like, completely serious. I mean, if you played Ground Zeroes or even listen to any of the audio logs you pick up, it's good. It's pretty rough. <laughs> Dark Souls 3. Boo. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, play that game and give it another chance. I'll be there to actually help you out. <laughs> Dodge at this point, I didn't do it. Ah, fuck, we're starting over. <laughs> I still think Dark Souls 1 is better than Dark Souls 2. If anything, because it told its own story. And kind of with how Dark Souls set up the world, Dark Souls 2 tries, like, it wants to tell its own story, but it's just so reliant on the first one. If I'm going to talk about a developer, I'd love to see make another game. The studio that ended up making Journey, I'd love for them to make another game here pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Every game they've ever made has been... It's never been one of those games that's ever been really difficult, but they've always had a lot to say, and they've always been beautiful. And, and they're called That Game Company. It's all one word, That Game <laughs> Company. I bought both the original Journey album, but I also bought a, the second album that Austin Wintory, the composer for Journey, made. Um, had him autograph it, too. Um, because anytime you get support any kind of indie developed musician or writer or creator like that, it's always helpful. So I've always been a big fan of low budget indie games, especially nowadays when a lot of the a lot that's just admit a lot of the games nowadays are a white dude with scruff shooting guns. And there's not enough games that try to make you think or anything like that. Yeah, that might be a discussion for another time. What game you would make if you could. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Or our opinions of, like, indie games versus big stream games or whatever. More details of what we're talking about now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't play much of either. You just play old games. <laughs> I, I'm just constantly playing catch-up. I'm never on point, ever. I think Ground Zeroes was the most recent thing I'd, I'd ever bought. <laughs> Ground Zeroes and Dark Souls 2. That's cool. But I can't really think of anything else. A lot of games have been sequeled. I mean... Yeah. That's one thing this generation of consoles, and at least the past couple of years, you couldn't... It's there's even games now that make sequels every year, which is really disappointing. And those are the ones that sell. Yeah, we kind of fall hook, line and sinker to that. But to me, I mean, it's it's almost like a too much of a good thing. Plus, the more you make it, the lower quality is going to get. It's it's like food. A restaurant will always have higher quality ingredients when there's just the one private restaurant. If you turn into a corporation that has a billion restaurants, you're, of course, it's probably going to turn kind of shitty. 
I had a random th one, but I don't know if I would actually want to see a sequel of it, because the first one wasn't very good, but uh, Jet Force Gemini. Oh yeah, that was a lot of fun. I thought it was a lot of fun. I liked it when I was a kid, then I played it again, and the camera is atrocious. We're also dealing with the Nintendo 64. <laughs> well, it was like it was a third-person shooter. I don't think we'd ever see it again, though. I mean, Rare, yeah. Yeah, that's probably why I didn't bring it up when I first thought of it. Because Rare went belly up, and now they're just doing Kinect shit. Can I tell you that gimmick-based gaming really needs to die? Yes. Especially if your gimmick isn't good. <laughs> Skyward Sword! <laughs> Seriously, you, Eager Raptor, if you hear this, please do a sequelitis on Skyward Sword. It would be hilarious. <laughs> Can you also do a sequelitis to Assassin's Creed? <laughs> Sometimes I think games are better knowing they'll never have sequels. And I notice more ones with, with artistic points and merits. It only adds to the lore of the game itself. Like, I could never imagine a sequel to Shadow of the Colossus. I just can't. Yeah. No matter how, like, how good it could be, the lore of what the game kind of represented and left behind would be completely lost if you just made a new one. I mean, it, it's kind of like Journey. You couldn't make a sequel to Journey because it, it's about life's one journey, so making a sequel to it would completely ruin the first game. I think games that focus more on the game-playing element, absolutely. If you think a game would improve... In that sense, or maybe... The only thing I can make a comparison is if you see a game like, say, Uncharted. Of course, Uncharted's gonna deserve sequels because they're all kind of encapsulated stories within themselves. They re And you never really learn enough about the characters to really get everything you want out of the first one. It's basically, at least you eat something and you're satisfied, but you really don't get to taste everything on the menu, in a sense. Mm -hmm. But you take a game maybe like The Last of Us, I don't think I could ever see a sequel to that game and take it seriously. They would have if they did, they would have to completely like change the foundation of, you know, who was involved, things like that. They certainly couldn't take the same story elements. And even if they did, they're like, what would be the major point of the the what they're trying to put across from it? I think games with strong moral points or things like that don't really make good for sequels. Some games the sequels are actually worse. Which is kind of the springboard for this discussion. Because sequels don't tend to be great. <laughs> Sequels are not always a good idea. One of these days I need to bring my cousin in. He and I have some pretty interesting gaming discussions. Mostly about games I haven't played, though. Hopefully not too much Call of Duty. No. Thank God. More like Mass Effect. Dragon oh. Age. Okay. Bioware shit. Yeah. I have played those games, so I could add to it. Oh, I think I'm about ready for the next Fallout or Elder Scrolls. See, luckily with games like that, you all you gotta really do is come up with a new story to add to the world. And you're good, because the world itself is something you can establish, and you've only established a section at a time. It follows in least the discussion I made at a point where it's the story versus the world versus the individual versus you. And with a game like Skyward Sword and Fallout, it is a player avatar of yourself playing in a world with not much of a story involved. Because if there's a story involved, it makes no difference when you control yourself on a large map. It wouldn't flow correctly, it wouldn't make sense. If it gave you full control like that, you know, you really couldn't develop a character as a good guy if I can Fusto Raw bear down a mountain. <laughs> you know, it, it's just not possible. It's like I can't convince the myself or the audience or the people in the game that I'm a good person when I do something bad. And when games are set on rails and ideals, they at least have the ability of developing a story that makes sense and develops the characters cohesively. And a lot of times that's because we're not we are not the character. We're controlling the character and watching his actions and playing as him, but we're not we're not him or her. I think games that leave that open element are made for sequels. That's why games like Sleeping Dogs would be fantastic for a sequel. It's a game where you decide how it works because you're playing as an avatar and you're not playing as a character. As much as Wei Shin is a character, I suppose, to be honest, how much of that character is actually existent? We know that he is a badass, but that's something we developed. We know he has some moral good side to him, but he's kind of a jerk and things like that. But we really, there's not much detail beyond that. There's enough flexibility in what he does that when we're controlling him, we could go either way. Well, they, they develop a moral ambiguity to him pretty early on where he's a good guy that's willing to do bad things. You've left it open to do anything you want now, brother. <laughs> and of course, Skyrim and honestly, even games like Mass Effect and stuff. Since you're picking so much of how the character works, it doesn't necessarily lead to the 
best story. It leads to interesting characters. I mean, this, honestly, if we talk about, you know, games like Mass Effect in that regard, it's and even things like Fallout. What's interesting is not you. What's interesting are the people around you. Which might have been one of the weaknesses of Skyrim, is the story sucked. Yeah, the story was pretty much could be ignored and laughable. But things going on around you, and honestly, the things that are going around you weren't in the point of developing the story. They were always there to develop the world. Dragonborn DLC ruled, though. Oh, yeah. Well, again, I'm not dissing the games by any means. Yeah. But... And it's cool to have games that win this that way. And I, and I said, games like that are perfect sequel bait. And also, they added a tremendous level of replay value, too. They don't always make you think, but they are fun. Yeah. So that's the reason why I believe some games deserve sequels and some don't. See, I attached it back to the original discussion. <laughs> and nobody wants a Skyward Sword 2. You know what? I'm sure there are people that do. Because yeah. it has Legend of Zelda on it, and there's Link, and... Actually, isn't Zelda Wii U supposed to follow on from that control scheme? Most likely. You know, see, I wouldn't even be against that, just as long as the game wasn't so obviously a constant puzzle done the exact same way. And you know the story was good. Well, I even admitted when I wasn't even that excited when I heard Skyward Sword was coming out. It seemed like it came out in such quick fashion, didn't it? I mean, it's maybe this with Twilight Princess took forever. Yeah. But like it, it felt like there was more hype behind it because it was re we went from looking at Link being a cartoonish kind of looking character back to his realistic form. Most realistic we've ever seen him. In fact, Skyward Sword, I think, was one of the first Zelda games in a good while to come out on time. <laughs> we saw why. Interesting that it was made to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Zelda, and in the process destroyed a lot of the things that made Zelda good. I don't like Skyward Sword anymore. Have I mentioned that? <laughs> There's elements you liked. I didn't dislike the control scheme. And there's interesting characters. Just none of them are significant to the plot except Groose. That is another funny thing about that game. It had simultaneously the worst Zelda character ever, Fee, and one of the best, Groose. At some point, they put one or the other needs to play plot in future games. Groose. Yeah, hopefully Groose. Despite the fact that now Hyrule Warrior added Fee as a playable character. And it did kind of a mini rage earlier today. <laughs> She ballerinas around the stage. That's her moves. I want Groose to have be in the game, too, because he can, like, maybe punch and kick and then shoot a cannon. None of that. He just jumps in the sky and Dr. Strange loves a giant bomb flower onto enemies. <laughs> I do hope that eventually uh, Sakurai announces that Groose is in the Smash Brothers. I mean, seeing how many characters he's adding in, he's got to add Groose. And imagine, because they add him, they'd put his music in the game. <laughs> Olivia, I don't know if she still does this, but occasionally, like, when we're sitting kind of quiet in a call, just sort of thinking to ourselves, she starts humming the Groose theme. <laughs> That's her thinking music. <laughs> you know what I would say? I'd be willing to see a Skyward Sword sequel if the main character was Groose. Yes. If they did a side story called Groose's Adventure. The Legend of Groose. The Legend come on. of Come on, it, it makes itself. People want it. <laughs> That's a sequel I want. Or maybe it's just a, it, the sequel is basically Groose having a dream where he saves the princess from the end of the world. That's a way you could segue it in. Yeah. It'd be kind of like Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land or whatever, except a character that most people like. So yeah, we're settling to putting all our budgets and Kickstarter funds towards <laughs> Groose's on the loose. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking if The Legend of Groose did come out, it would have to be a total farce, which I think could be fun. Exactly. And they can play and they can also make the game kind of different in the way it plays. We never do see Groose use any weapons aside from the catapult. Obviously, he uses his punching and kicking out, I assume. He looks pretty strong. And he's in the Knight's Academy. I mean, that has to mean something. Yeah, he got that far. Maybe he fights using inventions. Because, I mean, it, it does say something about him that he could vent a cannon on a rail. I mean, that's pretty advanced. It'd be like Scribble Knots. Yeah. I think this, this has actually moved from talking about sequels to talking about Groose. So. <laughs> Why wouldn't it? Why not? Well, I can't think of any other sequels <laughs> I want. Neither can I. I want a sequel to SeaWorld. I want a sequel to my Windows 7 recovery we disc. We got a new sensation. 